are you all doing? I hope you are all doing well. Today we are going to be testing out some art hacks. Today's video is kindly sponsored by Squarespace. From websites, portfolios, and online stores for your artwork to marketing tools and analytics, Squarespace is an all-in-one platform to build a personal and beautiful online presence to run your business. And this is something that even though I have done many times over the last few years, I'm still surprised to this day how much people still request for me to find new art hacks to test out and make a video on them. Some of you may even have found me through those testing art hack videos from Instagram art hacks I've tested, Pinterest art hacks, Troom Troom art hacks, but today I thought I would do something a little bit different because I don't think anyone's done this yet. I am going to be testing art hacks from YouTube Shorts. I hope a lot of you know what that means because it's still a new thing. So basically YouTube Shorts, they have been around to be fair for probably close to a year now, but if you don't know what they are, I'll give you a, a brief rundown. Essentially, YouTube Shorts are like TikTok videos in the sense they're short form videos, they're vertical, you can swipe through a bunch of them. They can be up to 60 seconds long and basically they're just really fun to kind of sit and watch if you have a short attention span. Recently, a lot of artists and different brands and channels have actually jumped on the YouTube Shorts train and made a bunch of art hack related videos where they're showing you how they do certain little things like tips and tricks and hacks. And would you believe it? Five Minute Crafts even has shorts with art hacks. They're five minute crafts making 60 second short videos. And as always, if you see any art hacks, no matter how ridiculous they are, feel free to go to my Instagram and send them to me um, for me to try out in a future video. I have picked a mixture of art hacks that are like genuine good art hacks and also art hacks that are kind of a bit crappy. But yeah, I'm excited and let's get started. Okay, let's start off with the very first hack that I saw from 5 Minute Crafts. And this one in particular, I think is a little bit questionable, but I mean, can you expect anything different from 5 Minute Crafts? <sighs> um, and as you probably can imagine if you've ever seen a 5 Minute Craft video, this one it's gonna be, it's probably not gonna work, but we're gonna try it anyway. So basically, this is just an entire 56 second vertical clip with hacks that you can do with balloons. But some things are slightly questionable. For example, they are currently putting a balloon into a giant hole, then covering it around with sand. Then they pop the balloon to make a smaller hole. So they're using pencil to sketch out some formulas or whatever they're doing. They don't have an eraser though, so they stick a little mini balloon on the end. How is it a complete solid? It's not bending. That, like, what have they put in it to make it do that? They put some like concrete in it or clay or something. So they got a balloon like this, got a baby little, little latex balloon. They stick it on the end of the pencil. Okay, this hack is actually really useful because most people don't have a single eraser in their house, but they do have a pack of tiny little balloons. So let's get testing. Let's see if this works, shall we? I've stuck my balloon on the end. It doesn't quite look like theirs. Right, so quite clearly you can see straight off the bat that it doesn't look the same. Theirs is bulbous on the end. Mine's just, mine's gonna be floppy. Theirs is like a solid. Hold your hats, ladies and gentlemen. Let's see if this hack works. Are you ready? Ah, yes, perfect. Looks good. This surprisingly is not working. I'm actually genuinely shocked. Well, it looks a little bit more. I put some air into it. Yeah, worked great. Pointless. This next one, I'm actually really curious if this works because I have never seen this hack before, but I think that it could actually work. Maybe, who knows, it's got a lot of views on it. Um, and it says, I fixed my student's art brush with boiling water. Um, basically a completely frayed art brush. I don't know what their student did with it to make it look like that. So I have this tiny little frayed like paintbrush. It's not quite to their standard, but it's slightly frayed. So we're gonna go get some boiling water and stick it in. I don't know what they did other than stick it in boiling water and maybe let it dry. Who knows, let's, let's, let's give it a try. Okay, I have a mint kettle, is anyone surprised? I've just boiled it up, I've got a, a glass jar here um, and I'm just gonna pour the water into it. Sticking a paintbrush into boiling water is gonna really rapidly melt the glue that's holding the paintbrush together. So I don't recommend doing this to your brushes. Um, so basically, we're just gonna stick that in there. 
it has magically gone back together. Look at that. That is pretty cool. It did go straight back into place. Would it do this with cold water? Good question. Pro it, probably, it probably would because it's fibers that are gonna stick together because they're wet. Okay, uh, it literally looks brand new. I'm actually very surprised. If you are in a pinch though, and you need a paintbrush that you don't have another one of, or it's a cheap paintbrush you don't mind throwing away in the future, this could work for you, but just be very careful. I'm actually amazed how, how well that worked. I mean, it's slightly separating now, it's dry. Let's try this cheap crappy one too. That might be, I mean, I don't think this one's gonna go back together because it's a cheap crappy paintbrush, but we'll try it anyway. You stick it in the water and you can kind of like mold it. It does work. It does hold it together pretty decently. It does a very good job of that. However, will it sustain? Will it stay that way? That's my question because the more I sort of push it around, as if I was, you know, gonna be painting on a surface, it's kind of like flay fraying out again. So is this a long-term solution? No. Will this improve your brushes a little bit? Potentially. Um, it's still fraying a little bit, but as soon as you put it back in the water, it sculpts it back together and you can kind of mold it dry to be better. So this hack, I would give like a three and a half out of five maybe because it does work. I just think that you've got to be careful to not destroy your brushes and also it's not a permanent solution because once you basically screwed up your brushes, you kind of don't really have much option but to throw them away. Or you can use them as texture brushes dry brushing. They're very good for that. So this next hack I thought was mind-blowingly genius. Um, I've never seen this particular hack before, but I think it's going to be like really beneficial to a lot of people. As long as it works at least. I don't know if it's going to work, but I, I, my fingers are crossed that it does work. So it's how to get a perfectly crisp line every time you paint. So whether you have washi tape or you have like a painter's tape on a wall, she's showing you how to make the edges perfect and seamless. Now, normally when you paint walls or you paint things and you stick tape down, you'll paint over it to then pull the tape off and get that nice seamless line. For me personally though, it doesn't always seem to work that way, especially with walls because I have textured walls. When I actually did my Starry Night painting, when I pulled off the tape on the edge, it wasn't a very straight line because of the textures there. If you're working on a very, very smooth flat surface and you can really press the tape edge down, it works well. But unfortunately, my walls are not like that and sometimes paper isn't really like that either. The only issue is you'd have to have the original background color, which I don't have. Right, my wall is very textured. Do you see the texture there? This causes a problem because whenever I try to use painter's tape, obviously, it doesn't work because it's bubbled and I can't like get that nice sealed edge with the tape. So for example, I've got my painter's tape here, like that, nice. And then I have the painter's tape here. So I have the two edges of the painter's tape right there. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna paint over one side with white. Well, that's orange. It's fine, I'm gonna paint over this wall anyway so I'm not too worried, but I'm gonna paint over the edge of the wall. Thank goodness this matches because this is just acrylic paint from Apple Barrel. <laughs> and then I'm gonna let that dry and then I'm gonna paint over it again. We're running on a schedule here. Right, it's still not dry, so we're taking intense measures right now. How is everyone doing? Is everyone having a good day today? I hope so. Come on, dry! Yay, it's dry! Okay, cool. So it is, it is now dry, let us get on, well, it was dry. Let us get on to the new shade. So we have some paint here, I'm just gonna go straight over it, like that. Okay, there's that color, and then we're gonna do it on this side too. Okay, so now we gotta wait for that to dry. Whoops. Right, moment of truth. This one is dry and so is this one. So we're just gonna pull the tape off. Yeah, that is not a very straight line. <laughs> this is exactly what happened to me when I was doing my wall painting because the wall is textured so it's impossible to smooth it down enough to not have that happen. Next up, we're gonna see if this side worked. I'm actually very curious to know. Look at that! What the heck? Look how good that looks! I am genuinely shocked. <laughs> I'm so sweaty right now, it's so warm, but look how good this looks. It's so seamless. This line is perfect, and then this side looks like utter garbage. 
that's a nice vibe actually just like the whole blank wall and then just two strips of dark green paint jokes aside i'm actually gonna be painting my wall with this color in next video keep your eyes peeled but yeah this camera has 9%. So let's talk a little bit more about our sponsor, Squarespace. If you're an artist or creative looking to build a portfolio of work, Squarespace is the absolute perfect website building platform that makes creating a website professional and easy. You can build your own portfolio and gallery, which is so beneficial as an artist, and it's essential to show for work or if you want to become a freelancer. Squarespace is the perfect website building platform that allows you to create a professional and easy website. You can build not only a portfolio, but you can also build a gallery, which is essential essential as an artist and is one of the biggest things I suggest to absolutely anyone that wants to become an artist or professional in the creative field. Definitely build a portfolio if you haven't already. What's really cool about Squarespace is you can display customizable galleries and you can also have password protected pages to share work with clients privately. You can also sell your art online without fees that most selling platforms tend to have and you can not only build your store by yourself, you can also have fully customizable e-commerce templates to make it look super professional and the ability to bill your commissions too or services if you are doing something that's custom. They also have an incredible point of sale, which basically means that if you work at conventions or sell your work to people in the real world, Squarespace has this ability to check and track your inventory automatically to keep all of your sales in sync with your online store. So if you want to try it out for yourself, head over to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch your site fully, go to squarespace.com slash to get 10% off your very first purchase of a website or domain. And thank you so much to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. Okay, so this next hack is technically not a hack, but I really wanted to include it anyway because it's like a really cool painting trick that my friend Ray came up with. This is about how you draw bubbles with black paper and some pencils. And I am not someone that really uses pencils all that much, so I always appreciate any tips I can get. So we need some pencils, some black paper. Okay, here is the paper right here. Um, and she uses a white pencil like this with something circular like this to draw a circle. I personally appreciate that she used a bowl to draw the circle because I personally can't draw circles and I think most people are like that. So I'm glad that she didn't just like, boop, perfect circle. Okay, there's our circle. Wow, the first most perfect circle I've ever drawn in my entire life. That was wonderful. Boom, look at that. I just drew that freehand. I didn't use a paint can or anything. Okay, so she's got the outline. Four slightly rounded rectangles in blue. Okay, let's try that. I basically found a couple of really good art hacks and tips and tricks from a couple. Okay, I'm gonna we'll do like a little one here. Okay, so there's that. And then we're gonna add a couple of pink ones. Okay, so I've added some pink and some blue. And once she's done that, I think she adds some yellow. I hope I haven't gone too over the top with the yellow. I really do. I'm being ballsy now and I'm adding some more blue just to see if I need to add more to it or not. We've got some white paint now. We're gonna take our little paint brush and we're gonna take this and she said to add white. This I think is really gonna pull it together. It's really scary. I know when I first started drawing, I thought it was really scary when you would add like big chunks and blocks of color. Cause it'd be like, what the heck, that looks so bad. But then right at the end, you realize that it really, really actually helps it all come to life and look more realistic. Add in some random dots here and there. Bestie, I know you can draw dots. Add but I can though! Yeah, I messed up the dots! What the heck? So Damn it! Okay, maybe it's my stupid paintbrush. I put it in boiling water, maybe that messed it up. Ta-da, it's a bubble. I'm actually really happy with that. I know that sounds really stupid because I only spent like five minutes on it and it doesn't look great up close. But you know what, Ray? You are a very good teacher in like 60 seconds. 
that was fun. Like, highly, hi like, this is one of those things that the further away you look at it, the better it looks. Like, if you look at it up close, it doesn't look that great. But, like, far away, it looks like a realistic bubble, right? Pretty happy with that. Good job, Ray. That was really fun. I enjoyed that one. Again, not really a hack, more so like a little tip, trick, tutorial thing, but I just I had to do it because it was fun. Hack number whatever this is because I've lost count. Now, this particular hack um, is very questionable. Maybe for, for younger people would work well. I don't want to say too much because one time I, I criticized like a Troom Troom video because they used like a hair comb to make a feather and it didn't, I didn't think it looked very good and then people said that I was being mean, but it didn't look that good. I'm just, I was just being honest, it didn't look that good. Um, but this one, I'm gonna let it speak for itself. Um, they're basically drawing a horse and this technique could work again for like new artists or younger artists. I don't really understand why they use such a thick pen because they're giving you a tutorial about how you can like draw over a horse by kind of visualizing the lines and surrounding areas of the horse to kind of make it more proportionately accurate. But I mean, no one can really fully draw perfectly this way. Like I think they've done a good job for what they were trying to achieve. But yeah, that's, that's what, yeah. So I'm just gonna show you some of the comments. Still waiting for the part where I learn how to draw. This one, this is helpful for kids, you know? True, that is kind of helpful for, for kids. It's just not really the way that most people tend to learn to draw. Okay, so I'm gonna use this example, but like on, on my iPad, because it's easier to kind of do this on my iPad than anything else. Just kind of trying to do this as an example. So basically the reason why they show you this method is because essentially it's easier to draw lines and visualize lines than it is to draw like a whole 3D character. So, so they're like, oh, if you simplify it, it's easier to draw which is actually very true. It's easier to kind of visualize this with a line. And I'm, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do what they did. I'm not gonna erase because then it's not like me using a marker. So this is gonna look terrible, just so you know. But yeah, when I draw, I kind of try to visualize it in shapes and lines and stuff, even though a lot of people don't really use this method much. I personally find it sometimes easier to visualize things that way. It's also really not the best way to learn because then you're kind of visualizing it in a way that's not really benefiting you in the future, in the long run, because you're kind of not like analyzing the distance between the lines or anything like that. What happened there? I don't know what happened. So he looks a bit weird. You can see that. It's about using lines to kind of try and figure, I mean, the pause the looks terrible, but yeah. This is kind of the method they're showing you to use. It's not really the way that artists tend to do it. If you wanna learn kind of perspectives from every angle, like the distance between things, use a grid method, which is like where you have like lines like this, and then you kind of analyze the shapes yourself with each kind of little section of the graph, if that makes sense. I don't like this bear though, so I'm gonna redraw it properly. Okay, so he's not perfect, but this was just a quick sketch of a bear to show you how I would kind of, if I was to be copying this reference, this is how I'd somewhat start off to get that basic first sketch. Because he doesn't have a solid line all the way around him, he does have a lot of like flecks of fur. This is how I generally would just start it off, making it kind of very, very messy. Then I would go ahead and then refine it properly, fix any parts that are off. Okay, so it is in fact the next day that I took to do this last hack because my camera died. I'm wearing the same shirt though for continuity purposes, but my hair looks different, so let's just pretend it's the same. Okay, so this last one is not so much, again, a hack, but more of a tip or technique that I've personally never used because it involves pencils again. I, again, I'm not really a pencil artist. I've used them every so often for coloring in cartoons and things like that, but not actual real realistic portraits like some artists do. My video is always about me trying new things that I've not really tried before, like acrylic digital painting. Those two are my things, but everything else, not so much. What are you doing? You've got a, got a fluffy boy here. Are you a good boy? 
Now this particular one is actually a tip or like a technique used by a fellow British artist. Her name is Temi Danso. Her channel is Temi Danso Art and she is a fantastic, like unbelievably talented pencil artist. And she basically shows her technique for blending pencils. And this is not something I've ever actually looked into before. Like I just kind of figured out for myself, oh, this is how you do it. You just kind of put colors that are similar together. But she fully blends a whole range of rainbow colors together from red to orange to yellow to green to dark green it looks awesome okay so we've got red orange yellow green and dark green okay so we do a very light shade before and then we do a second layer that's also light but kind of blends into the next one i need a pencil sharpener where are all of my pencil sharpeners i wasn't recording uh, basically all i did was use the red pencil and I, I did that and then I've used the orange pencil and I've done that and I put the, the tape down. I'm sorry you missed it. Now my biggest issue with coloured pencils is that when you put those first layers on they look so bad. Like they look so bad. So I tend to just like press way too hard to make it look better. But as with most things in art, patience is key. Apparently pencils like this have become very popular as well during the last year because they're one of the least messy kind of mediums to use. Okay, so there's my first layer. Looks great. Okay, so we're gonna put this second layer down. And I'm gonna add some more orange. As she said, we're focusing on the transition between the two colors. I think she said circular motions actually. Okay, I feel like these two colors are just not, they're not wanting to blend, but Again, I'm going to trust the process because I don't know what else to do. <laughs> right, so here's the second layer. They're not blending very well. They don't look very good. Layer three, apply more pressure at the solid colour areas. But as you get into the transition to the next colour, go a little bit lighter. Repeat okay. this for layer four and you can go in opposite direction. Okay, so the next trick is to apply it darker in the solid areas, but get lighter handed where the transition works. This is a very slow process, I will not lie. It is slower than I expected. Okay, they're somewhat blending, but still a bit crap. So hopefully with the next layer, they're gonna look a little bit better. Repeat this for layer four and you can go in opposite direction so that you can get rid of the whites of the page we can see. Okay, so we're on the fourth layer now um, and she says basically you're gonna start burnishing, which is where you really start pressing hard on the paper to get rid of those white spots. So let's hope that it now looks good when I'm done. Okay, so this is my blend. Um, it's not the best blend. It's certainly not as good as hers. This is hers. It's way more blended looking than mine is. But yeah, these, these pencil artists are amazing. They really make it look super easy. This is something I definitely need practice with. So it's not horrendous, but it's definitely not as good as a lot of people I've seen. That's it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope that you enjoyed it. Again, if you see any shorts or Instagram reels or TikToks or anything you would like me to try out in a future video, feel free to send it my way. And yeah, for now, this is it. Thank you so much for watching this video. Take care of yourselves and I will see you in the next video. Bye.